Hey guys, it's Fallen Clam here, the 12th Vanguard, and this is my guide for the defense gear set, showing you guys three different ways to build this setup. The three ways I'm going to show you guys how to build this is the tank version, the bruiser built version, which is a mix between damage and tank, and just an outright just damage version, which is really good for taking out ads for PvP and PvE. All these builds are good for PvP and PvE for the different purposes, but we'll start off with the chest pieces. You're going to be wanting to get either a bearish chest piece, which is of course a really hard one, so I wouldn't actually recommend getting this until unless you've got one or you farm or you're going planning to be farming for one. Bearish chest piece is a pretty hard drop to get from for the Lessington Event Center. But also, if you don't have, say if you don't want to get those and it's going to take too long to try to get it, I recommend either getting a defense vest, which is pretty good. Especially if you're going to be using like um, different types of gloves and masks. And a operator vest with reckless, of course. And this is going to pretty much be for your damage um, setups. Mine has damage to elite armor, ammo capacity, and it is pretty much going to rip through any type of elite in the game. I do really absurd amounts of damage. When I do this in my field test, you're going to see how much it can just ink out. For masks, I can use either defense mask and the rehabilitated mask. I don't have that on me, I actually accidentally scrapped my last one, so sadly I can't show you guys. But that one comes with 2% um, life like heal when you're under a status effect, which is super good. Moving on, we're going to move to knee pads, which is pretty much going to be the only knee pads you're going to be using are the defense gear sets. The accomplished ones are okay if you're going to be farming everything like that, but I wouldn't usually recommend using that with this kind of build. But if you do want to use those, I'm not stopping you. Those are pretty good as well. Moving on to the backpacks, we're going to use either a specialized backpack, which adds both your 200% of your firearms stamina to your skill power. This is really good for getting out that extra amount of just shield health and a resourceful backpack, which is also really, really good, especially if you're going to be under a lot of fire. If you're going into the underground or if you're going to be fighting in PvP, I would recommend using a resourceful backpack over a specialized backpack because having that booster shot heal for your shield as well outside of just yourself really helps you be able to tank that extra amount of damage, especially in longer skirmishes and stuff like that. So that shield doesn't drop and keep it out longer. Between the two gloves you're going to be using is the normal defense gloves. The mods or the ma major attributes you want to look, you're going to be looking for for these are the SNG damage, health on kill, damage to elites, and crit hit damage. Those are the top three you're going to be looking for, especially the SMG damage and damage to elite for me personally. Reason being is because of the fact that SMGs are going to be your primary weapon. Health on kill is really good, especially for being a tank. That allows you to just completely stay in fights and after a fight you can like clear some at like the red bars, especially for Pete in the dark zone. You can clear some reds, get some health back and continue the fight. Critical hit damage because you can crit with this build. Of course it's kind of... It's kind of odd, especially if you use Savage. You don't have a, you have a really low critical hit dam or critical hit chance, but it still happens, and the extra damage is really nice, especially for that extra burst. As far as holsters go, there's only one I can think of, which is even between the name one, which is the Colonel Bliss's holster, is the defense ones. Those are the best ones you're going to be working for and using. So overall, that's pretty much ones you're going to be using for, for weapons. Let's move on to those. So I'm going to show you guys the three top guns I recommend for the defense gear set. It's starting with the number one best one between the three is the MP5 ST. This one is literally the best out of all the SMGs that you can use for this build. It's better than the Thompson, Midas, all those ones. All There's nothing that can beat the MP5 as far as base damage in my opinion, RPM, magazine size. The, the, the overall stat statistics for this gun are the best. Mine rolled with competent, which is really good for my build overall, because it does increase my shield health, and I also get that bonus damage. Responsive, because you're going to be up close, and you're going to be in that person's face, especially in PvP. You're going to be in that person's face, so that extra 10% damage is going to push them away. And brutal, because you're going to be up close, and it's, gonna, it's pretty easy to land your headshots, because you get that bonus accuracy and your bonus stability with your mods. The next one we're going to be talking about is the MP5 um, N, which is actually really good as well. Of course, this one is not as nearly good as the MP5 ST, mostly because of the fact that you can't put a headshot scope on that, which means a really big difference in damage. But you can put on a red dot scope, which does increase your damage, your critical hit damage, and your headshot damage by a small margin compared to like a 6% to an 18%. Now, the one I have, the, the third best one, is the Vector 45 ASP. Uh, this one is super, super good, but I have this one set up for like a skill power variant because it has a really nice magazine side. The RPM. RPM is nice and clear as pretty well with it, but I'll go on to that later. 
So now let's go over like the ones you don't want to use, like the Midas and all those other named ones. And like the reason why you may not want to use those over the ones I just named off. So we're gonna start with the Midas. You know that golden gun that you like that's like rarely dropped. I actually got one. Thing is, this thing's mag size, the the perks that it actually comes with are just just not that good for the, the build itself. And the RPM is way too low. It is literally like the worst thing to put on your with your um defense gear set. Especially when you have like response is good, but the critical hit chance and the crit and the self-preserved are completely wasted for this build. Your critical hit chance is reduced to zero when you use a defense gear set. So would I use this? No. This will actually this is your we're wasting two perks and just, just, just don't use it. It's just not that great. Now here's the MP7, which is considered to be the best PvP gun in the game. And again, even for PvP standards, I wouldn't use this with a defense gear set. You do way better in the like you know the longer skirmishes than the short skirmishes that this gun is really good for. It's got nice RPM. You even have a god roll right here. It's got responsive, brutal, and, and um and destructive. It just doesn't do enough. The damage it has on it, it just falls like it's really lackluster. And the fact you can't put a headshot scope on this, and the only ones you can put on is for at least for headshot damage, the per red dot site for that 60%, is just not enough. It's just literally not enough for it to be like viable for a defense gear. So you could use it. It's got really nice RPM, but the base damage and everything like that, it it doesn't. Do, it's just not good enough. Now the other ones you could use, which uh, outside of that, is like the PP19, which is a really big one. It's got a huge max size, it's got a kind of okay RPM. But the problem I found with this is that the accuracy with this thing is just, just absolutely just terrible. Reason being is because of the fact that the bloom effect on it when you shoot your gun, the reticle gets really like just wide and it gets really inaccurate, which really hurts the get like the gun's ammo capacity or overall. Especially in those long gunfights when people are hip firing all day and they're gonna be trying to get behind you. This gun's biggest flaw is because the accuracy is way too low. Now I you can still use this, especially for like if you're gonna be using this for PvE, but even then the reticle gets way too large. If you have like an accuracy mod on it, which does increase decrease the damage on it, oh it's just way there's way too much to try to fix for that gun to make it work. Now, I do have the other two ones that people are looking for, which is the Thompson and Tommy gun. And these may be, look good on paper, but in practice, at least in my practice, I had a hard time using these. Reason being is because even though the carefree perk where you know when you're aiming when you're not aiming down sights and you're actually firing this thing, the amount of damage you're pushing out is really, really low. Because of the fact that you can only put on a magazine magazine bonus for these guns. That means you're losing any bonuses upwards of like 30%. 60% just bonus damage you're losing because you can't put mods on these guns They really need to buff these guns. You can't put like a you can only put on a Magazine size and these things are super rare and people are looking for these I, I have I have both of them. I had like two or three and I've got god rolls for both of them, but I Don't use them at all. They're pretty much filling up space in my vault Only because of the fact that they're gold and they're named and they're really hard to find and I can just kind of show them off but they're fun but I really don't recommend using these. These are not good enough for the defense gear set and pretty much for any PvP circumstance or PvE. Moving on, we're gonna talk about how to mod these and like the minor and major attributes you're gonna be looking for for putting these guns up to the highest amount of damage you can push out. So the ones you're gonna be looking for, especially for like the, the, the highest amount of damage or like the top one, which is considered to be the major attribute, is gonna be either headshot damage, then critical hit damage, Stability or accuracy depending on which one what gun you're using because so most guns they might have too much bloom So you might want to put more accuracy on it Optimal range and rate of fire those are gonna be pretty much the ones you're gonna be looking for for all when you're building your weapons and guns You do want to have these because of the fact that the more critical hit damage the more headshot damage You're gonna be having the more damage you're gonna be pushing out overall of course. This is pretty much said and done and it's pretty easy with your defense gear set because you get so much bonus like stats overall accuracy stability pretty much just because of the way the shield works again and you do want to make sure when you do mod your weapons that they do have like, a nice amount of dps a good amount of accuracy for your gun and you do want that high rpm or increased rpm with your magazines so I'm quickly and actually i thought about using a small grip but you do want optimal range on your grips the best grips for the SMG class 
are going to be the the hand or the vertical grips. Any one's good, especially one with reload speed, those are okay, but the one I have or I'm going to be using is the one with critical hit damage because that does give me that a little bit of extra damage on my burst with my um, SMGs, which is really deceptive amounts of damage, especially in longer fights. So skipping ahead to like my fully modded gun, like with overall everything I would want on it, if you want a VX1 scope with for that critical hit damage, headshot damage, a compensator with for that critical hit damage, stability, and headshot damage, a wolf grip vertical grip with my critical hit damage optimal range for that increased range, and an extended mag with critical hit damage and rate of fire. Reload speed is good if you don't have critical hit damage, but overall, don't worry about those ones, especially for the extended mags. So as far as abilities go, you want to go with first aid with your overdose so you get that extra shield say if you're getting flanked and you really do need that extra heal. That does help. Or booster shot, which does increase your damage distance and damage overall. This is the best one between the two, so I recommend picking this one up over the overdose. But if you do prefer overdose, use overdose. Now as far as shields go, you're either going to use a soul shield, which does increase your damage and your accuracy and your faster reload speed, which is really nice, especially for getting that DPS up really high. Or if you want to be playing for like the tanky role for your team, Kinetic Breaker is super good, especially with, since people love to try to rip through people's shields. And the extra healing, say if you're getting flanked from the sides, this is going to keep you alive in those team fights a lot longer than most people would think. So moving on, we're going to talk about what kind of stuff you're going to be looking for for your gear, your gear and what kind of mods you're going to be putting onto those. For your prototypes or the stat mods, you're going to be putting on either stamina, firearms with armor rolled onto them. Those are the best ones overall, especially for this game's meta. Armor and mitigation is just pretty much the only thing that works. So those are going to be for your primary ones. It can be either like 5 for a complete high damage version, or you can get up to like 48 or um, 4,800 4, firearms for that so you can get all those perks and then put as much as you can into your, stamina, your toughness because you're going to be kind of squishy without it. And having more damage is nice but I still wouldn't recommend too much because you're gonna die pretty fast but for right now I'm gonna try out like a glass cannon like PvP like just one shot or not one shot but like one clip and if you're gonna be flying like a lot of like NPCs especially if you're gonna be farming and everything like that this is pretty much this build which is gonna be re relying mostly on reckless with perform performance mods that increase my damage by 4% or damage resilience mods which increase my resistance by 4.5% but I'm not using those I'm mostly focusing on just straight up DPS. That means it's putting as much damage as I can onto my weapon. So we're going to test how much damage I can do with like a few shots. And after shooting for a little bit, uh, I do about 48k with like a base with all my damage mods and everything like that. That's 48k with my shield out. And about 56, it looks like 56 damage on crit when I do crit with my headshots. Which is actually really nice. And I do like that damage, but when I pop my boost shot and get my Compton bonus, my damage jumps up drastically. I do up about 56k damage a shot, while doing for crits about 88k. Now this is a really nice range of damage between the other ones I'm going to be showing off later on. But this is a really nice range of damage. You're going to be doing a lot of damage. Especially when you pop your booster shot and then you get like a med kit off or somebody's healing you. Or if you pop yellow, it's just going to be absurd amounts of damage overall. And I really like that. So moving on to my MP5, I'm gonna. Uh, you can't put a headshot scope on this, but you can put on the red dot scope I was talking about like earlier on, and that does give you a nice amount of headshot damage and critical hit damage. So for this build, since I kind of like noticed that I can get a really nice amount of critical hit damage out of this, I'm gonna switch up my build a little bit. I'm gonna be going for a critical version of this build, which is gonna be mostly relying on Savage Gloves and getting that crit damage as high as I as possibly as I can with my um, setup I'm gonna be using. So, Savage Gloves, because I do get that critical hit damage. Of course, again, you're going to be risking that critical hit chance a little bit. But the Savage Bonus does work for this build. So you do get that extra 7% when people are out of cover. Which does allow you to get that extra damage out that you wouldn't be able to usually tap into. And that's going to be a high amount of critical hit damage. So my scope between like my low and my high is going to be re really different when I critical hit. So my burst is going to be really high, but my low damage or my minimum is going to be really low. So... For this, I'm going to be a little bit more tankier as well because I do have a nice amount of firearms with this because I do have a really nice pair of Savage Gloves. So I'm going for a little bit more tanky because I need I need a little bit. So this is pretty much like a field test to show like if I were to build this, how would I build this? So I'm going to try and get as much health as I possibly can while also being a little bit more on the damage side. 
So with all the stamina mods and all that stuff fully optimized and everything, I do ink out to have about 416k toughness and a really nice amount of firearms as well. This allows me to be both tanky and damaged at the same time. And it's pretty much like a bruiser set I was talking about earlier. So this is my, my other like in-between build. And as far as mods, I'm going to be doing that for as the same way as well. Going for two damage resilience mods and then two damage mods. So I get about 8% bonus damage. And I would want to have 10% bonus damage resilience, but I can't have that because I don't have those mods. So when I did put it to test to see how much damage I do, I do about 400k on my low side, which is about 40. Which is really nice, it's 8,000 less than my um, MP5, but my high is really nice, it's about 75. And I also switched up my talent, so instead of running with a booster shot, I ran sweeper so I can get that increased critical hit chance. Which does actually stack with the savage glow, so it ups up to like 21%. And then for my critical hit damage is also increased by like like 26%. So the amount of damage I'm pushing out is really really nice, especially since I'm going to be critical hit like my critical hits are doing upwards of 100 like 100k. So my low is about like 56 or, or I think I was like 50ish, which is really nice and then I have 100k burst. Now my high and low are really nice for this gun and the fact that I have to use it this way does make it a little bit harder to use because I don't have any booster shields or anything like that to keep me alive. So I had to usually rely on my team for this. But if they can keep me alive through like using certain like um, med kits or not med kits but using like first aids and using a support station, I can bring out some pretty decent damage with that build setup. Now changing to my ve my vector ICP, this is pretty much built the same way as my MP5. Of course, focusing mostly on that headshot damage. Again, because this one does actually has the ability to use one of these, which is really nice and it does allow you to do that extra bit of damage, especially since this is for my skill power build. So yeah, this is gonna be the end of the video, guys. I'm gonna be doing my part two um, later on today and finishing that up and then posting it tomorrow. But what I'm gonna be doing is putting these things to the test and see how well they work in both PvP and the PvE zones. So I'm going to be going to the Dark Zone and the Lexington to see how much damage I can push out with these weapons. Hopefully I do do I do pretty well. Um, I'm going to be showing full footage so that means I'm going to put like 5 minutes of each weapon in. So do expect that to be pretty long as far as this one goes. This one's just pretty much a guide to show you guys how to build stuff. Then I'm going to show you guys in practice what, how these things work. So that's going to be the end of the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, subscribe and look forward to part 2 because I'm going to be putting a lot of work into that one as well. And show you guys how much fun you guys can have using these builds instead of the alpha bridge, which is pretty boring right about now. So I hope you guys have a great one. This is Final Calamity again. This is the 12th Vanguard, and I hope you guys have a great day.